Episode number 8. Peak of the Golden Era and Days of Jazz. Typically we review a few things going on in the world when we start the episode. Not today. 1995 to 1996 were such monumental years for hip-hop and its culture, so for the moment, that is all we will focus on. In 95, a flood, over the span of 365 mind-boggling beat-banging days. All the record labels, all the super production teams put out the most incredible tunes that you knew would be classic as soon as you heard it. It came from all corners of the United States and beyond, East Coast Bad Boy Records, West Coast Death Row Records, No Limit Records in the South, power teams like, Wu-Tang Clan and the Brooklyn Bunch Boot Camp Click, all killing the game, they dropped seminal records that would go on to inspire generations to come. A creative surge brought forth Mob Deeps, the infamous, Raekwons, only built for Cuban links, Smith & Wessons, Da Shining, and A. Z's, Do or Die, just to name a few. Everyone was going for theirs. Clans, posses, crews and cliques strategically began to carve out regional territory creating loyal fans across the globe. 95 was also the last from the Titans, the final full year we rap fans witnessed the epic greatness of both Tupac Shakur, and, the notorious B.I.G. These two giants were in their prime, battling across the billboard chart positions as a slow boil would soon become explosive in the streets. Derived from a number of genres, ranging from jazz, funk and soul to rock and roll, during this peak in the golden age of hip-hop, samples were heavily used. The ability to sample different beats, riffs and patterns from a wide variety of sources gave birth to a new breed of producers and DJs who did not necessarily need formal musical training or instruments, just a good ear for sound collages. Hip-hop production became denser, rhymes and beats faster, as the drum machine was augmented with the sampler technology. Many of the sample-laden albums released during this time would not be able to receive legal clearance. There is no denying the severe divide in sonic aesthetics between the Eastern and Pacific time zones. In fact, these epic sound samplings were amplified by the likes of G-Funk and gangster rap in full throttle in the West, with the hard snares and cold concrete of New York City giving birth to some of the most influential records of the genre. The collaborations in hip-hop at this time was uncanny, bringing together the near-holy union of Mob Deep, Rake One and Nas an Eye for an Eye. Bay Area Big Dogs lit him up with I Got 5 on it remix featuring, Drew, Down, E-40, Humpty Hump, Richie Rich, Shock G and Spice One. The R&B remixes were hitting hard. Okay. Wait. I see your face. Don't pretend you weren't nodding your heads to Mary J. Blige and Method Man's, One More Chance, Stay With Me remix Notorious B.I.G., featuring wife Faith Evans and an uncredited appearance by Mary J. Blige. There are simply too many important releases of 1996. Here are just a few that had to be mentioned, Fuji's, The Score, Jay-Z, Reasonable Doubt, Dr. Octagon, Cool Keith, DJ Shadow, Introduction, Ghostface, Iron Man, Razkaz, Soul on Ice, Nocturnal, Hell to Skelta, Lil' Kim, Hardcore, Bahamadia, Collage, Foxy Brown, Ilnana, Exhibit, At the Speed of Life. Interesting Fact. Before the Slim Shady LP there was Infinite by Eminem produced by himself and Mr. Porter. Of course there is no way to avoid speaking on one of hip-hop's greatest losses. Tupac Shakur died on September 13, 1996, six days after an unknown gunman in a white Cadillac shot him four times in the chest at a stoplight in Las Vegas. The haunting album The Don Illuminati, The Seven Day Theory is the first posthumous album by Tupac Shakur, alias Machiavelli. This list just barely scratches the surface of the grandness of the 96 releases. Meanwhile back in Boston the Exile Society had also engaged in what would become a pivotal collaboration in their career. Along with the hip-hop shows of Boston so came lots of violence at said hip-hop shows. Nothing new there. Unfortunately with the city being small that limited the venues that the group had to perform at. With his daughter healing and out of the hospital. The group needed to expand their horizons, his aunt who visited with him in the hospital had inspired him to think outside of Boston. Trank went back to the group with a suggestion. What about live musicians? That might open up more venues and get some gigs abroad. The musical relationship may be news to many of the younger hip-hop generation however, there's no doubting the clear and unbreakable bond between the genres. Jazz music has gifted hip-hop artists a unique sense of creativity, open to improvisation, pushing musical boundaries, and defying convention. Why was 1959 the year that changed jazz? 
1959 was the seismic year jazz broke away from complex bebop music to new forms, allowing soloists unprecedented freedom to explore and express. Seven major jazz albums were made, each a high watermark for the artists and a powerful reflection of the times. Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, John Coltrane, Giant Steps, Dave Brubeck, Time Out, or Nick Coleman, The Shape of Jazz to Come, Art Blakey, Monin, Abby Lincoln, Abby is Blue, and Charles Mingus, uh um, all cut timeless classics, which is why many fans hold that 1959 is the greatest year in all of jazz music. Fast forward 36 years later. 1995 The Exile Society being huge fans of jazz, they would look to the world-renowned musical institution that had been attended by their family generations before them, Boston's Berklee College of Music. They linked up with an eclectic culturally diverse crew of like-minded enthusiastic young musicians. Stefan from Belgium on flute and sax, Jeff from Seattle on bass, Chris from Switzerland on drums, Thomas from Paris, France on guitar, Nyambazi on keyboards and rhymes, Hypno, LCJ and Trank on rhymes. Little did they know the union with these musicians now called the Triple X would change their lives forever. It began with some local and regional shows in New England, Wallis in Boston to Kebliac Jackson, Maine. Next these eight cats lit up the night airwaves on Emerson College radio station WERS 88.9 FM Live Music Week. After a performance at Berkeley, the final recital for the drummer Chris, the Exile Society along with their new musician brothers went into the studio and recorded a few live versions of songs the Exile Society previously recorded only on four tracks. With all the excitement and momentum they built up, this would be their exit from Boston. The Exile Society and the Triple X left for their first trip across the pond to Europe for the Live from the Lower East tour. The Exile Society and band Triple X didn't know it but on their 95 and 96 tours they were creating a body of music that was an absolute love letter to hip-hop jazz and funk and its fusion. In these two years of touring they played with the Bobby Bird Band, the Larry Graham Band, Courtney Bine, The Far Side, The Sugar Hill Gang, and Mel Mel. 1996 ended with the inspirational recording session that brought together the Berkeley College Gang, along with future Grammy winner drummer Swiss Chris, and, legacy Harry Chapin's daughter, Jen Chapin, at Funky Slice Studio near downtown Brooklyn where Biggie recorded his very first tune. This limited edition 7-inch vinyl release includes, Reluctant Traveler from the 96 European Tour, and, Till the World is Gone, the live session recordings from Funky Slice Studio available on Hi-Fi Underground Shop. Make them kill all the sex trips Giving props to Ross Ferry on the way to Japan